Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. Before we get into today's video, make sure you go down, drop a like on the video if you haven't already. Tottenham are back in Europe after beating Sheffield United 3-0 away from home. And to be honest, it's a little bit disappointing because Tottenham only finished two points off of Aston Villa today, who got absolutely destroyed by Crystal Palace. 5-0. 5-0. They just lost to Crystal Palace. And we narrowly missed out on Champions League football. You know, we finished fifth. Relatively good first season under Ange Postacoglu, who, you know, after his midweek kind of press reaction, didn't seem to be um, the, ha the happiest of, of people after our defeat against Manchester City. Today, back to winning ways, you know. And, and now it's about... Getting into the transfer window, clearing out some dead wood, going again and building something under Ange Postacoglu. We're going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about the goals. We're going to bring up the lineup on screen, which, you know, the back four I'm, I'm happy with now. Very, very happy with this back four. Vicario, Porro, Mickey van der Ven, Radu Dragusin, Christian Romero and Pedro Porro. Obviously, Porro on the score sheet today. Saar, Benson, Core, Madison in the 10, Johnson, Son, and Diane Kulazewski, who got a brace. Now, for me, you know, this, this back four, for me, I'm very, very, very happy with. In terms of the bench, we brought on Skip, we brought on Hoiberg, Mikey Moore again, Dane Scarlett, and Emerson Royale, who does look like he's going to be off to Saudi Arabia in the summer. Now, for me... It, this game was all about going out, getting a professional performance and just absolutely making 100% sure that we finish in the Europa League. Um, obviously, we did that, a professional performance. Good goals from Kulizewski and and, um, and Pedro Porro. For now, I feel like there's, we, we need to just get into this summer and, and start building. Funny enough, we've actually got a friendly in three days' time, Wednesday, 10.45 kickoff against Newcastle. And then we our next game is against Iniesta's Japanese side, Vissel Kobe, on the 27th of July. I don't I don't actually think we've got many pre-season games planned or not planned as it stands. For me, you know, today was all about getting a professional performance, putting in, you know, the goals beyond Sheffield United, who have gone down with a record-breaking 104 goals conceded and Tottenham were responsible for five of those so yeah in, in terms of the actual goals you know a good performance today get, getting a goal relatively early Dayan Kulisewski who to be honest hasn't scored in a long 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 time you know funny enough he was the one who was on the end of the the goal against Sheffield United in the home league you know absolute sucker punch Kulisewski makes it 1-0 Van der Ven won the ball high up the pitch works it to the centre towards Son and as the South Korean was getting challenged, he played it through to Dan Kulisevsky, who just inside the box struck the ball across the goal and off the back post and made it 1-0. And all of a sudden, since then, I never really thought Sheffield United were really in the game. It should probably should have gone 2-0 up at the end of the half. You know, then make it 2-0. Brennan Johnson gets his 10th Premier League assist. He's turning out to be a relatively good signing for Spurs now. You know, Pedro Porro, great, great strike, makes it 2-0. And then, you know, since then, other than that, you know, we, we, we kind of just like took absolute, complete control of the game, made it 3-0. Dejan Kulisewski gets his second goal of the game. And I just think it, I'm not going to gas the performance up too well. I just think it was a comfortable performance. It was a comfortable performance. Like for me... I'm happy. I'm very, very, very happy with that performance. I look at, I look at this, this Tottenham team. You know, Sheffield United are already down. That they are a terrible, terrible side. But for us now, you know, we go into this transfer window very optimistic. You know, the the, the media are peddling out that we're going to go and spend two hundred million pounds or whatever it is. I don't think we're going to do that. But Ange Postecoglou wants to build something and he wants to win under this under this ownership. He wants to break the dud and actually go and win a trophy with Spurs. He wants to be successful. You know, so we 
just need to go out and give this man the keys and, and, and just win. You know, we're at a position now where, you know, we are, we're back in Europe. We're in the Europa League. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to be completely honest. It is not going to be an easy task. Playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. There's going to be a big overhaul of players going in and out of the door. You're likely to see, you know, you're likely to see Timo Werner going back to Germany, Richarlison leaving, Brian Hill leaving, Manuel Solomon leaving, bringing in a few new forwards. The midfield, Hoiberg's future is uncertain. Uh, Giovanni Celso's future is uncertain. The defence, Emerson Royale looks like he's going to leave. Sergio Reguilon will probably, he'll leave. Obviously, he's had two loan spells this season, one at Man United and then one at Brentford, who has actually done relatively well. Ryan Sessegnon, another one. Is he going to, is he going to be there next season? I don't, I look at this, I look at this team now. We're in a position where we can close the gap between us, Manchester City and Arsenal with the right recruitment. With the right recruitment, we we can genuinely go out there and close the gap by quite some distance between us and Arsenal and Manchester City just by bringing in quality players. You know, Ange Postacoglu's first season, we finished fifth. Jurgen Klopp's first season, he finished eighth. Mikel Arteta's first season, he's finished eighth. Pochettino's first season at Spurs, he finished fifth or sixth. Pochettino's first season at Chelsea, he's finished sixth. Our, our, yes, our season hasn't really gone to plan in terms of the domestic side of the game because we got knocked out of both cups quite early on. But for me, I generally think that right now we are a, one or two players away from genuinely being a very, very, very good side next season. You know, we are in in a position now of, of, of real strength, in my opinion. We are, you know, we, we, we just now need to go again and see where we end up. Get into the summer window, buy some decent players, give Ange the keys, man. Give Ange Postacoglu the keys. We are going to do an in-depth review of the game tomorrow. We'll probably do a live stream. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But for me, you know, beating Sheffield United is one thing, but Finishing fifth, getting back into Europe for me is very, very, very important. That for me is the number one priority this season was getting back into the Europa League or Champions League. It's a bit of a kick in the teeth that we didn't, you know, get into the Champions League. Aston Villa completely fell off a cliff the last two games of the season. You know, they fell off a cliff in Europe. I don't think they're as strong as as other people are making them out to be, you know. And for us... Finishing in the in the Europa League in Ange Postecoglou's first season, I don't think is a disappointment by any stretch of the imagination. You know, Ange, I think we should be relatively happy with that. You know, we are in a position now where we can attract players by playing in Europe next season. We, we've we've got the foundations there. We've got a very strong defence. We just need to tra- make some a few tactical changes. You know, Ange Postecoglou has been speaking about. Dan Kulisevsky t- uh, today, and he said, I thought Deki was good. He worked awfully hard this year uh, without a lot of reward in the front third. Uh, we-, we thought playing him through the middle today would help us with his mobility and the ability to run in behind and he did well. And, you know, this potentially could be a position where you could play Dan Kulisevsky next season in the number nine role. I don't think he's as strong as other players. We've got out wide the likes of Son and Brennan Johnson. I don't think he's got the blistering pace to play there. Um and has also come out on his first year at Charger Spurs and said, it's been good. It's been eventful. It's had a bit of everything. I'm obviously not delighted with the way we finished the season. But in fairness to the players and staff, we've been in the top five all season in a year where we've had a fair bit of upheaval. Uh, we finished eighth last season. Um, player turnover, different football, different way of training. It's not easy to maintain a level when you're trying to do that. And I think he's absolutely spot on. I think he's absolutely spot on, you know. Human Son and Brennan Johnson both end the season with 10 Premier League assists to their name. Only two players in the Premier League had more assists than them this season. Tottenham this season gained more points than last season, scored more goals than last season, conceded less goals than last season, finished higher and are back in a European competition. You know, we, we are we are the trajectory of the football club is going in the right direction. We just need to get behind, get behind this manager and and because I believe we will be successful.
I truly believe Tottenham will be successful under Ange Postacoglu. Thank you all for watching.